Right, hey BMW, turn on the air conditioning. Turn on the air conditioning. I've activated the air conditioning system. It's off your time. Can you change her voice, can you? Yes, you can. <laughs> Not sure what to, but you can. Um, right. What did we get up to last time? Forward bay parking. Did some forward bay, didn't we? Yeah. Um, you can... Right. Did you get those um, notes through any phone? Did you update your app, by the way? Yeah. So it's scannable? Yeah, yeah. We did do that, didn't we? Um, I'm not sure. Um, Thoughts on what we should do today then. From what we did last time, we were doing a little bit of bay parking again, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that went pretty well. How do you feel it went? Okay. Any bits and things that you feel as though um, well, need improving or anything like that? The reversing out. The reversing out. Okay. Uh, what part of the reversing out? I don't know. Like actually go in the right way. In steer direction it was, yeah. Okay, no problem. Remember it's dead simple. Look to where you want to go and steer in that direction. If you're going forwards, look where you want to go. If you're going backwards, look where you want to go yes. and steer in that direction. It's that simple. Um, we worked a little bit of steering as well while we were driving as well. What were we talking about with our steering? Can't remember. Straightening. Straightening with the opposite side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And those hands need to be loose, loose and slidey a little more. Um, we said maybe about the emergency stop potentially today and some consistency when it's a little bit more complex. What do you feel about any of them? Should we go off and do the emergency stop somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Just chucking all the bags in the back on the floor. So when we do it, we don't go uh, zooming off everywhere. Um, driving wise, what are you going to concentrate on then as we do our driving? What are you going to be working with, do you think? Mirrors. Mirrors? Yeah, okay. checking the mirrors before. Before, uh, yeah. Before most things, braking, merging into lanes. Yeah, before you do stuff, that's a good shout. That would be nice if you could work on that a little bit today. Um, ready to go? Yeah. Go on in, off we go. Round the van. Who's coming the other way? Nobody. So if you'd have spent your time looking at the floor and someone had to come the other way, you would have had problems, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, if someone comes, it's just a case of stopping, isn't it? Yeah. You need to. All good. straighten up a little late yeah 
remember, it's not where the front points that tells you when to straighten up. It's that opposite side and following it, isn't it? And we'll just go ahead today, please. Straight. Job. Try not to stare at the silver one, try and look at the best space to deal with it. Depends on what the silver one does really, doesn't it? Yeah. I think he's What's it doing? Waiting. Therefore? Good. Good. And um, remember, be positive. So moving out and actually going a little helps. Now what should we do with the space? Go back into the... And slow it down. And now go again. It's not just a dodge em car where you just steer, yeah? Right turn please at these lights, seven. The other right. Don't worry about that, it's not a problem. Don't need to lift the clutch back up, remember, when you're pressing the brake, yeah? If you're gonna need to move forward, what do, what do you do with your feet? First, not third. Cool. You sort this out, you'll deal with it. It's not side to side. It's not side to side, that's the issue. Okay, good. Okay, not bad at all. Just a little bit too eager to be looking side to side still. You've got to get away from that thought. It's not a give way. I have to have a little look, remember? But it's not a give way to side it's to side. Traffic. It's oncoming traffic. Okay. Go straight, please. thoughts about the coordination at the lights what, what, what you're missing the gears and bits and yeah, bobs what, what was your thoughts on that just I don't know just didn't mean to okay how can you uh, ensure that you select the correct gears farming method. method relax you have to have some more feel with these controls <laughs> that's too close position remember comes from what could you expect the lights to do nice nice little back off of the gas to accommodate that and cope with that well done Now the next set of traffic lights, it's not the crossings coming up, but the next set of lights which are coming up reasonably soon, we're going to be turning right, please Erin. These ones after this? I haven't said that, listen carefully. It's not the crossings, it's the next set of traffic lights. You're just slowing down, you shouldn't be Erin. You shouldn't be slowing, you need to just look. Where's the junction? I don't know. Have a look, further up. You shouldn't be slowing down. You shouldn't be slowing down because all you'll do is make these overtake you. Now, when's the best time to lane change? Now. Good. Do you get it? You have to look further, don't you? All right. Pretty good job in the end, but a bit of a twist of your arm to get you to do it. But pretty good. That's it. It's fully positioned the blue ones in. Just make sure it's not broken down. That's totally fine. Straighten up with the left side. Keep that in mind when you're doing the turns and not peering down at it. Lift your eyes up and peripherally straighten up with this opposite side. 
pretty good little start again, well done. Is there any dangers and issues around here? On there. Yeah, definitely. This person could come out. Good. You're just still a little behind. That guy sat on the railing was the main thing that I was thinking of when I first asked you, and it took you a few seconds to get to him. So that says I'm that you st enough. you're still not looking far ahead enough. Yeah. Get looking a little further. Not reactive. So you should be trying to plan what you should be doing with the van now. Is he moving? No. The car, uh, the car in front there. is. Yeah. Okay, nice job. Very close to this side, it's because you're looking at the van and steering away from it. It's not where to look, is it? No, that's not what to do. Follow the inside of the bend rather than steering away from things you're scared of. You have to understand the width of your car now. Come on, improve with it. You've got to stop these little things happening constantly, not just occasionally now. Straight at the roundabout, please, Erin. It's the second exit. Straight on second exit. Have a look how sharp it is. Look who's coming. What side are you going to keep to? What side yeah, are you going to keep to? What side. could this one do? Okay. Nice job, just check your mirror before we signal them. Alright, look far. Left at the lights, look up, find it. Yes, good. That was a pretty good attempt. Just not sure that you were doing enough with that car that came round. If it if it had have come round in front of us, I think I would have had to, had to get involved there. You needed to be slowing to suit that one and be ready for it to come round. Not hope that it goes in your road, which I can tell that that's what you did, yeah? Don't hope it doesn't come round. Slow down so you know it's not gonna come round and then you're able to do it. Good. Further up, Erin, because you're in down in stop. here, you were going in the bus stop, weren't you? I was. And that's just rock solid proof of where you look when you go around corners, isn't it? Yeah? Come on. You have to trust your eyes further away from you now. Where's your position in relation to your lanes? Yeah. Aaron. You just weren't ready for it. Nope. Again, you're hoping things are going to go your way rather than adapting and changing your car so you're ready to deal with things. Yeah, you know how to deal with traffic lights, don't you? Mm -hmm. Come on. It's not a big deal, but just use that now to then said improve and, and get better with stuff of your own accord rather than me having to remind you about the lights. There's your normal position from Erin, you're drifting over there. Come here, come here more, better. Your normal position has to come from the left, yeah? Okay. We're gonna go ahead, by all means overtake this queue of traffic because they're all turning left. It's never an issue to do that. Make sense? Do you need the brake now? Good. What should we do then? Okay. Good. Well done. Next set of lights, we're turning right. Now, Erin, go, going first. You're just instantly reacting off what and changing gear doesn't get you going. Get you going first. Come on, go. Come on, it's 40. Into fourth, 
Now it changes to 50 after the sign. Now do you see the next set of lights? Yep. Come on, you should be accelerating also. Come on, use your feet more, Aaron. Yeah, you have to. You cannot just steer. Come on, back to the normal things, back to the, the things that sort of take a little bit of coaxing to get you away from. We just push you onto a different scenario and you sort of, the nerves sort of take over a bit again, don't they? It's fast. It's not fast if you look far enough, Aaron. Cool. Do we need to be drifting over here? Therefore, relax that left hand. Hold with your right. You're drifting here. You're on the line. Can't, Aaron. Yeah? You have to get these things in order now. You've got to work these things. And 50 is not fast if you're looking far enough. It's only because you're that used to looking really close. Handbrake, swap your right foot over. Come on, a little bit of coordination there. You don't need to be sitting there pressing the foot brake. Once you've stopped, get it all ready to go again. Any questions with the first little bit? I know I had to stop you at the set of lights, but um, we've covered that. We've covered that in big detail. I just need to just get you to do it somehow and you to think somehow. Quite a destructive way of doing things sometimes to just let the mistake happen. But tough now. We said about four or five lessons ago that it's down to you. I'm just gonna say less to you now. You've just gotta just take that on board and if you get a cob on with yourself because I've had to use the brake tough, you just gotta deal with it now, yeah? should you be straightening your wheels too. Yeah. Nice time for the second gear also, well done. That was good. At the roundabout we're going to turn left please. How come you're going for the clutch? Because I was going to... Go for the gear. Look at it Aaron, you fuck. Why? Why are you changing gear? Don't know. No idea whatsoever. Yeah? Come on, it's not these things. It's your eyes and it's working your feet, yeah? And you're still gear obsessed. Why'd you say again? Can you hear any clicking sound? Yep. Where are we going then? Left. Who put that on? Me. Come on, listen to the instructions. Yes, good. Be better with the clutch this time. Which pedal gets you going more? Still not using the right foot. Straight enough. down there. Which is left, Erin? Down there. Would the signal still help people? Yes. There's no one behind, but it would help the green bus, wouldn't it? The green bus saw us, and so did the white car, saw our signal, and then knew we were going down here. You were a bit early with the gears there. It's not the gears that make you go faster, it's your foot. Yeah? Take the next road on the left, please. Have you found it? No. Have you found it yet? No. Yes. What do you do with the clutch now? Lift it up. No gas. What do you do with the clutch? Feel the control as soon as you did. Mm -hmm. We're on a one-way street, Aaron. We're turning right at the end of it. Position over there. 
steer over that side, steer over that side and stop at the end. Handbrake on, stop, stop, not with the handbrake, stop with your feet and then put the handbrake on. There has to be better coordination between your foot and the foot brake and the handbrake coming on. Yeah, mm -hmm. first gear. Off you go and it's clear. Cool, left turn please. Mirrors first. You're obsessed with the gears. You're going for gears rather than looking. You've got to look. Gas and bite, Erin. Signal left and follow your left curb. Follow your left curb and now go slow. Is it good? Good. Your head's gone a bit, hasn't it? No? Good. I like that. Positive. No, it hasn't. We're going to find somewhere to park in. On the left, please. Okay. Let's get around this bin. Nice job. Don't go any further. Stop. Why do you think I was saying that to you? Um, oh, because of that road there. Absolutely. All right. Relax. Uh, one way street. Turn and right, where do you position your car? To the right. Didn't compute, did it? It's information that you know, but it didn't compute. Just before we turned into that one-way street, what was I saying to you about your clutch? Don't need it. Once you get that gear, the control is got by lifting the clutch pedal back up. If you're higher than that idle speed in that particular gear, it's not going to race off with you. That might be from the other lesson, do you remember when we were saying about that idle speed that it sort of like surges away from you, mm -hmm. but that's only when you're really slow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're not really, really slow and that gear's going to work, once you get that second gear, lift that clutch up for control and you can just let it idle then. All right, okay. Traffic lights, you've got to take a little bit more responsibility. I cannot forever be asking you what could happen here with the lights and then pressing that button in your head to get you ready to do it. You have to take some more responsibility now to do these things of your own accord. You've got these things but you are still far too reliant on me to think for you and like I've said I'm not going to do it. It's a process, it's quite a, sort of like tough love if you like that I've got to be a little bit ruthless with you to get you doing it because I am still your walking stick to a certain extent all right it's changed a lot for the positive over the last number of lessons and well done and today has also been a pretty good start however as soon as we get you onto something that's beyond your comfort zone have you noticed all the old stuff comes back you go for these all the time you stare at the floor, you don't use your gas, you lift the clutch up quick, you start grabbing with your hands. All the old stuff comes back and that's where you've got to change track a little. However, steps forward Aaron, well done, good, alright, keep positive today. Um, try not to let your head fall off if you have a little wobble. Just recompose and remember it's your observational stuff that's going to get you going again. Um, this emergency stopped. Do you feel okay doing this? Yeah. Good. Okay. Approximately about a one in three chance on your test of doing the emergency stop. Um, we're going to leave the car on. If it starts up, we may very well just turn it off for a little moment. Okay. All right. But for now, we're going to leave it on because the air conditioning's on, keeping us quite cool. Um, but there's about a one in three chance on your test of doing an emergency stop. Have you got any idea on what happens with it and what goes on with the emergency stop? No. Guess okay. you come to a stop at emergency. Yeah, your examiner will park you on the left first, tell you that they're gonna in a moment ask you to do the stop. They'll then tell you to drive on, and they'll then check around to make sure it's all clear, and then they'll 
when they're ready, when it is safe, they'll put the hand up to this sort of area of the windscreen and say, stop. And that's the point that you react in that emergency. But what is classed as an emergency stop? What do you mean? What situation? There was like a kid in front. Brilliant, kid runs out. Great stuff. Some people say if a car stops suddenly in front of you, no, because you shouldn't ever be in that situation. You should have anticipated it first. Yes. A car pulls out straight from a junction without any notice. Maybe, yeah. It's that emergency where you get no sort of massive amount of planning with it. Mm -hmm. Kid running off is the classic. Do you think you need to check any mirrors behind you? No. Good answer. There's nothing behind that would make you run a kid over. The people behind should be looking for it as well. Yeah. Um, we'll turn the car off just a little second. That's fine. Um, yes, they should be looking for it as well. And if they aren't, there's no in the world, even if there was a lorry following close, you'd say, sorry, kid, you're getting run over today. <laughs> you would try and stop. Yeah. There is a difference with animals. Animals, you check your mirrors and decide the best course of action. Okay, but it's not animals we're talking about today. We're talking about the kid runs off the road. So no mirror check. What do you think you then need to do? What, after you check your mirrors? After you don't check your mirrors. We're not checking the mirrors, don't not forget. Checking mirrors. Um, brake? Yes, state the obvious. As quickly you can get to your brake pedal, the better. If you pivot your foot, like we've said about, yeah. to get to the brakes and easy... Shouldn't be that. It, no, no, it's not a big deal. If you move your whole leg... That's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's going to take longer. And you'll have less control with it. You're more likely to stamp on the pedal if you move your whole leg yeah. rather than the pivot. So it's a pivot, get to the pressure, and then start squeezing. What would happen if you did stamp on the pedal? Do it really harshly. Um, the car cut out. Uh, cut out. It might do in the end, but that's irrelevant, really. Um, let's think of you on your push bike. I know you've been on a bike. Yeah. Back brake, the one on the left hand yeah. side. Yeah. Oh, you're just gonna go like. Is it the sort of thing that? No, you'll skid. You'll lock the wheels. Okay. Okay. That's if you're harsh with the brakes on a push bike. So you imagine if this is. My badge here is a brake disc. It's a circular piece of metal that's connected to the wheel and it spins the same speed as the wheel does. We've got two pads outside that we squeeze and that slows the car down. But if we stamp, they clamp onto that and stop it from moving and it just locks. So if you were ever in a car and it did lock the wheels, how would you unlock them, do you think? slowly take it back off. Good, and then you'd have to press again because you're still doing the emergency stop. However, most modern cars have something on them called ABS from your theory. What's ABS? Anti-lock braking system. And what it does, the sensors around the wheels which sense when the wheels lock and it takes the pressure off for you and then puts it back on for you many, many times a second. So it's a good system that's installed since, gee whiz, um, the early two, no, yeah, the early 2000s, I would have thought, that it became commonplace throughout all cars. That all manufacturers took this on board and, and came up with a sort of like an agreement that it's always going to be installed. This car's got ABS. How do, you car, how do you know whether a car's got ABS? Well, when you turn the ignition on, there's a light on the dashboard. Um, so we're going to try and find it. Press your start button. Sound. Press your uh, <laughs> clutch pedal. Good. Start your car and see whether there's an ABS light anywhere. Here we go. Now it's gone off. What does that then mean it means the ABS is working properly if it wasn't working properly it would still be on can you get them fixed if they yes yeah it's, it's sometimes can be quite a technical expensive fix but yes uh, ABS uh, it, 
it's it's an important thing and it's in and most cars. cars have them yes okay all cars since like i said early 2000s so is that in um, automax as well yes okay um so abs is really really important because it happened to me years ago on um, a car that I had, it was an old H Reg 1990, but it had ABS. And I was coming down a hill, wet weather, went to the brakes, and my brake pedal juddered all the way down to the lights. I thought, wow, what's that? And I actually took it to the garage and said to the, the guy who took my car to, I said, uh, my, my brakes are broken. He went, you idiot. So yes, I didn't have a clue because it wasn't on a lot of cars when I learned to drive. So if ABS works, there might be a little juddering in the pedal, which is totally normal. Okay. Okay, so in a car without ABS or if ABS was broke, you would have to let go and reapply, let go, reapply. In this car, ABS, you just keep it there. If you feel it or hear it, sometimes it can make a funny noise, just keep it pressed. All right? ABS worked well in dry weather, wet weather. It's no good in ice or snow. So the only way Why? you, because what it does, it senses the sensors around the wheels that sense the senses the differing or differing speeds in the wheels. So if, for example, the two wheels at the back are doing thirty, this one's doing thirty, and that one's doing two miles an hour, which one's locked? That one. So it will let go of that brake and reapply until the speeds are equalised. Sort of, that's a basic way of how it works. Okay. okay. So in ice or snow, all that's going to happen when you press the brakes, it will lock, let go, lock again, let go, lock again, let go, and it won't do much braking. So ABS doesn't work brilliantly in ice or snow. The only way that you can actually brake in ice or snow is lightly and gently and smoothly. Get it? Yeah. All right, sound. So, Go back, I've digressed a little bit, but um, emergency stop, kid runs out, no mirror check, quick reaction with the brake, and we're doing a heavy squeeze. This is the issue that I've been trying to get you to do with your accelerator pedal. You do not squeeze it. You just put your foot there and leave it. That cannot happen with the emergency stop. You must get to it and go more and more and more and more and more and more and more until the car stops. Just press the clutch as well. Good question, not yet, but yes. So a quick reaction, heavy squeeze of the brake. What are your hands gonna do? Well, people often, I hear people say, you've gotta hold the wheel a little bit tighter. Personally, I don't think you need to hold it any tighter than you do. <laughs> you have to be ready to steer because the weight of the car, as you, let me just grab my little car out if I can find it. Where's it gone? See you near there. I'll find it, where's my car gone? Anyway, um, it wasn't here. Just gonna make my little car. No, it's hiding. Hiding under the chewies. So, as the weight goes forward, um, the steering can go a little heavier at the front. So you have to be ready to fix a pull to one side or the other, but you don't have to necessarily grip really, really hard. And this is another point, as the weight goes forward, the back of the car can go light and that could cause the car to skid from side to side. If your car ever skids from side to side, I'm just going to leave it here, if your car skidded this way, which way should you steer to try and correct that skid? Good, well done, excellent, you've played a few computer games with that, or did that, was that just natural? Just natural. Just natural, good. You, yeah, you, you steer towards where you want to point. That's unlikely to happen, but it has happened to me on a few occasions. Uh, I got caught, not caught out, I saved it, but there was an oil spill on one road. I watched Liz do it as well, years ago, when we lived um, in Peterborough. Um, she was coming up the driveway, or the, the road towards our house, and it had been snowing and she went to turn the corner and the car just spun round and she ended up sliding backwards up the neighbour's path. So it's, honestly, it's, I wouldn't say it's very common, but it is something that you have to be ready for. Okay. 
so again digressing I need to just get on with this but it's it's information honestly Aaron that you should be studying and you should know yourself leading up to this so it's probably a little bit of a finger point to say come on get your theory stuffed on you should have known ABS all right sound so no mirror check, quick reaction, heavy squeeze the brake, you know about ABS, hold the wheel, try and keep all your braking in a straight line, however ABS does allow you to brake heavily and steer around obstructions, but that doesn't mean the back of the car won't skid like I've just explained. We will press the clutch down after we've pressed the brake, that's it, so just remember brake first, then clutch all the way to the floor, don't worry too much about the timing of it as long as it's after the brake pedal. Okay. Does the brake pedal need to go all the way to the floor? No, it won't. But it needs to be squeezed more and more and more and more and more until the car comes to a stop. Okay, it's a lot further than you would squeeze it normally. Okay. But it's not a stamp. Okay. okay. So, can you think of anything that would affect how quickly we stop? What? Could you think of anything that would affect how quickly we stop? How fast we were going? Very good double your speed you can quadruple your stopping distances okay at 30 miles an hour it says in the highway code although these are utterly pointless and as far as I'm concerned it says in the highway code it would take 23 meters or 75 feet to come to a stop how far away is 23 meters or 75 feet I don't know. that's why they're useless and also modern cars stop in a lot lot shorter distance than that and if a kid ran off the road it's not going to have 20. You're not, you no, you, you don't have those markings on the floor to know whether you're going to stop or not. So, no, uh, 23 metres is probably two. That's that white line. <coughs> I can't believe you've actually said that. How, how am I meant to know which white line you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the one on the left where the road comes out. No, half that distance. Where the grid is on the left see there's like a yeah. little manhole cover yeah it's about that sort of distance so if we're at 30 here and the kid ran out there we could easily stop we could probably stop in half that distance to be honest however can you think of anything that would affect how quickly we stop anything else i want to say what's around us but then if we're stopping surely they should start to stop yeah not really no um it's nothing surrounding us affects how quickly we stop the weather the weather great rain could be doubled ice or snow could be 10 times as much uphill but slightly uphill would that help us or hinder us it would hinder help downhill it would take longer to stop okay okay uh, the brakes the tires the mechanical aspects of your car have a big effect as well um me in the car has a bad effect. Why? Because I'm heavy. Oh. <laughs> if you have extra weight in the car, it may take longer to stop. Okay? So if you're on the way to the airport, car full of people, boot full of suitcases, it's gonna be hard to wet stop. weather, downhill, you get where I'm coming from. All right. So there's plenty of things, but your theory needs to raise up a notch. Yeah. All right, you've got to get a little bit better with it. So we're coming to a stop. We've done the brake, we've done the clutch, we've come to a stop. We're then gonna put the handbrake on once we've stopped. Once we've stopped, not as we're stopping. You do not need to touch anything down here until we've come to a total stop. Then put your handbrake on, then select neutral, relax your feet, and then I'd like you just to touch your brake pedal as well. Just as a little bit of a warning to people coming up, anyone behind. Okay. And then watch. Use your eyes, because there could be people around, couldn't there? Could be someone who's suddenly coming up behind. And this is even on the scenario of your test where it's going to be safe for you to do the stop, but there could be someone comes up behind that you may have to left signal to then say to them, we're staying here, so therefore you can go around us. So you have to watch. After you've done the stop, the examiner will go, thanks, Aaron. I won't ask you to do that again. I'd like to drive on when you're ready. And then, because we're stuck in the middle of the road, we need to do our observations everywhere. Normally moving off from this side, there's no reason to check your left blind spot. There's no one in your left blind spot that's gonna affect you moving off forward to the right. Mm. So we just check maybe, left mirror if you really want to, but center mirror, right mirror, right shoulder. When we've done the emergency stop, we're in the middle of the road, 
we're going to be checking everywhere. everywhere. Left shoulder, left mirror, in front, centre mirror, right mirror, right shoulder, moving your head around absolutely everywhere because there could be problems anywhere. Could be a cyclist coming down this side because we're not going to be nicely parked at the side of the road. Okay. All right? We're going to start off, first of all, you can turn your car off a moment, just by having a quick go with the reaction of your feet just so we can get the coordination and your reaction good before we actually go. Okay. Have you got any questions before we have a quick go at this? Okay. Hold the steering wheel as though you're driving normally. Put your left foot covering the clutch pedal. Right foot should be over towards the gas and definitely always pivotable. When I say stop, what I'd like you to do is get to the brake pedal, start squeezing, more, 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 more. Imagine we squeeze. And press the clutch fully down to the floor. Okay. That's as quickly as you can with all of it when I say stop. All right? Okay. So just look forward. You don't have to look at me when I say stop <laughs> as well. Just literally react with your feet. You ready? Yeah. Stop. I didn't do the clutch. So rather than telling me you didn't do the clutch. Do the clutch. Okay. Do the clutch. Okay. All right. So you, your reaction was actually pretty good and it was quite a good pivotable, but you'll probably need a little bit more pressure than you did. You just put your foot on it. All I heard was a dunk. I didn't hear a dunk and then a squeeze. Get it? Yes. Any second, may I ask you to stop? Stop. That was good. I'm happy with that. Your reaction was good, coordination was good. We cannot tell how much to use the brake pedal until we get moving. So therefore our next step would be to... Move. Brill, start your car. Obsessed with them blasted gears, girl, aren't you? Right, chill a second. Take it out of gear and relax.